Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. Today we're trying to understand the chi-squared distribution. Now time and again we've looked at different distributions. The Z distribution, the student's T distribution, and now we're looking at the chi-squared distribution. There's a common theme in all of them. We go ahead and compute the test statistic in all of these. This is the test statistic for chi-squared distribution. And for the test statistic, we compute a corresponding probability of the tail. And we see whether or not this probability, the p-value, is less than the significance level of the test, alpha. And if it is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So that is a common theme that occurs in hypothesis testing time and again. But the question here is, why do we really do the chi-squared tests? Why is chi-squared tests so important? Now the fundamental reason why we're so interested in chi-squared testing is because it, it's because it helps us to establish a difference between two data sets. And we could reason their statistical significance, whether or not these two data sets are different for real. So let's understand this with an example. Consider you throw a dice, right, and you throw it multiple times. What is the expected behavior? Now, the expected behavior is that you get, since it's a fair dice, you should expect each face to show up equal number of times. So if you throw a dice 180 times, you should expect all of the dice values to show up equally, 30 each, right? So 180 divided by six possible values, that's equal to 30. You should expect one to show up 30 times, two to show up 30 times, three, and so on. So you should expect all faces to show up equally. So that is one distribution. This is something that is expected. This, is, this behavior is, is expected from the dice. Mathematically, you could simply multiply the total number of times you throw something, the dice in this case, with the probability of each case. The probability in each case is one out of six. So you multiply one out of six with 180, that is the total throws, so you get 30 for each of them. If it's not a fair dice, and you are expecting a different probability for each throw, then you might multiply each prob associated probability with each face, and then get the expected outcomes. The point here is, you have a distribution of expected outcomes, and then you have a distribution of what actually happens. This is your observation. So you went ahead and threw the dice 180 times, and then you recorded how many times did you get ones. 20 times, how many times did you get twos, 25 times, and so on. The question here that we're trying to answer is whether or not this is a fair dice. Are these two distributions statistically different? Is there statistical significance in their difference? So that is the question we're trying to answer, which is why we have set our null hypothesis as this dice being fair. How do we, and we've also set up the test significance to 1%, which is 0.01 uh, probability. Now, if we go ahead and compute the test statistic, remember the test statistic is a difference of observed and expected values, square them, divide by the expected value, and we do this for all possible values and sum them up. It's easier to visualize this in the table where we take a difference between observed and expected values, difference between these two, here we are just simply squaring this number, multiplying it with itself, and then finally we divide this squared number by the expected value of 30, right? So divide this number by 30. And we do this for all of these dice values, right? And we obtain these values and we add them up. So this is basically a sum. Uh, and that gives us the test statistic value. And then we go ahead and find an associated probability, the p-value corresponding to this test statistic of the chi-squared test. And this is something we can do in Excel using the formula. We simply specify the test statistic value and the degrees of freedom. Notice we have six possible dice values, so the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, 5. This gives us a p-value, and it turns out this p-value is, in fact, less than 0.01, the 1% significance level. So it is smaller than 0 0.01, therefore we can reject the null hypothesis that the dice is not fair now. We have rejected this null. And we can also sort of see that this dice is in fact not fair. It shows one lesser number of times and shows six almost twice, and five even twice the number of times it shows one. So it's not, it's not, it's not quite fair. 
So this is how we can uh, use hypothesis testing and chi-square distribution. We could also uh, obtain the test statistic value from the chi-square distribution table, and this is how we can read them. Notice this is similar to the student's t-distribution. Since we have set our significance level to 1%, which is 0 0.01 probability, right? And we're looking at the degrees of freedom to be 5. So essentially, we're looking to beat this test statistic number to reject the null hypothesis, the number 15, right? So it corresponds to 1% significance level, and a degrees of freedom is 5. So if our test statistic is greater than 15, 0 0.086, we can say we are rejecting the null hypothesis. In our case, it is 18, so th that is why the tail probability happens to be less than 0 0.01. It is somewhat smaller than that, 0 0.0029. So therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis. Now, arriving at this p-value through this formulation, through the test statistic, is one thing. But if we have the distribution, or if we have these data set available to us, the actually observed outcomes and the expected outcomes. If they, these are available to us, what we could also do is use the chi-squid test dot test formula and plug in our values as they are, the observed values and the expected values. And that will give us the p-values directly. Notice they are the same in fact. And then we could compare this p-value to the significance level and make a decision on the rejection of the null hypothesis. In summary, we use chi-square testing to statistically specify whether or not two distributions are same or different. So that is what we hope to achieve with chi-square distribution.